You are listening to PT on Ice, the older adult, a collaboration between the Senior Rehab Project and the Institute of Clinical Excellence. This is a rebroadcast of an original episode that can be found at ptonice.com. Hello, everybody. I am so sorry that I am late today with PT on Ice. We usually like to get these episodes out at 8.30, but we had a crazy day at the clinic today, so I'm coming on here a little bit late. Uh, My name is Christina Previtt. I am on faculty in the older adult division for the Institute of Clinical Excellence. We just started our third cohort for the modern management of the older adult, and I am so, so excited to get started. If you guys are interested, the new uh, virtual ICE Uh, membership for the new year, the second year, opened up this week. So if you've been hesitating or thinking about getting on to the ICE, our virtual ICE platform, you should do that because uh, we have gone from bi-weekly to weekly meetups. So that's going to be really, really excited, exciting. Uh, Dustin and I are super excited to get on to the virtual ICE uh, group and talk a little bit about some of the topics we are going to discuss with older adults. Okay, so for today, when we are talking about ourselves as physical therapists or rehabilitation professionals, I would say that we take a lot of pride in being movement experts. So we do a lot of work in terms of biomechanics, movement physiology, exercise-based prescription, And so we really pride ourselves in being able to break down movements and build up weaknesses, uh, move tight muscles, and get people moving to the best of their ability. As a PT that works a lot with lifters, um, I've talked in previous PT on Ice about being an Olympic lifter myself, but also working with older adults, um, it's funny to see the change in my mentality And Dustin talks about this a lot when he works in home health. So as we get older, we have accumulation of age-related changes, which include a lot of things that are degenerative in nature. And we also start to see the accumulation of injuries that affect the way that our body is capable of moving. And what ends up happening is that we see uh, stiffness in ranges of motion in the upper and lower extremity, We see um, pain-provoking movements, so um, unable to go through full range of motion with pain as a limiter, and other things like that. So when we are trying to do exercise-based prescription, we get into this question about how much do we load an individual before uh, things start to break down or within... um, within the limits of that individual without causing pain and discomfort. And so a perfect example of this is the hip hinge and lifting something up off the floor. With some of my older adults, we're going to start to see the accumulation of a mechanical thoracic kyphosis that is going to be structural in nature. And so we need to make sure that we are trying to uh, work through Um, trying to get as much thoracic extension as we can and maintaining the position of our ribs and our low back. But it may not be realistic to think that our older adults are going to be able to have this perfect plumb line coming down from the back of our head to the base of our hip. And so when do we start to say this might be okay for our older adult, but it might not be okay for my 20 something who may be experiencing some discogenic low back pain. And this is not necessarily the easiest question to answer, but something that I think is really important. And I go from a couple of different different, uh, principles that have kind of guided me and I thought might be helpful for you. So for me, when I'm doing, we're gonna stay with the, the deadlift example. So if I am teaching a hip hinge to somebody who has more of an exaggerated thoracic kyphosis, for example, maybe a little bit more straight through their lumbar spine, maybe have a bit of a posterior pelvic tilt, a a fairly common, not necessarily normal, but common presentation for some of my older adults, I am looking for um, maintenance of their curvatures through that hip hinge. So we're thinking that as we're trying to bend through the hip, 
most of our movement or all of it really should be coming through our hip joint with our back staying in a relatively neutral position all the way down and all the way back up. So for if I'm seeing someone who's in their 70s with a structural thoracic kyphosis, then I'm looking for them to maintain that curve all the way down and all the way back up. What I start to do, if things start to break down, that's when we start to lose that person's natural curve. And I know that this is a relatively uh, controversial area because some people are of the opposite opinion where we are trying to make sure that people have perfect mechanics before we start to load them. When I'm working with some of my older clients, that necessarily isn't realistic for them. And I don't necessarily think that they are going to have perfect alignment all the time. And so now I get into this question, if they're unable to reach towards the floor, or if they don't have the strength to pick something up off the ground that they need to be able to do in their, their day-to-day tasks, I am trying to make sure that they have the resiliency to stay independent in their home. And this is an ever-moving target. It is something that I think is very difficult to try to conceptualize as a PT. But one of the things we want to do is do no harm. And the APTA actually put this in one of their documents saying how we need to stop underloading some of our older clients. And the reason why we might be doing this, and absolutely so, especially when I was a new grad, this was something that I was very worried about doing, is we tend to be more conservative in nature because of lack of perfect alignment. And Dustin and I talk about this in our course where he works in a home health setting where this lack of strength has taken on a clinical presentation and now we're dealing with sarcopenia, a clinical geriatric syndrome that we have talked about in our previous episodes. And if we don't boost that functional resiliency by increasing their strength, then that could really threaten a person's independence and their ability to stay in their home, which if we ask most of our older clients is one of the main reasons why they may have home health PT is to be able to build that functional reserve, that functional resiliency so that they can stay independent and feel like they are not a burden on their family. And so what my guiding principles are is that Um, especially given the functional resiliency of the individual in front of me, am I going to be doing more harm by underloading them and continuing to see this negative soliloquy of sarcopenia, fatigue, lethargy, and lack of movement? So if if we are at risk for that, then I will load an individual even if alignment isn't perfect. The second principle is that I look at what is optimal for them. So just like the title of this PT on Ice podcast, it may not be what is perfect. So it may not be what we would expect to see potentially in ourselves, but it is optimal for them and it is not putting them at increased risk. So I'm seeing a maintenance of um, their neutral position through range of motion. I am going through pain-free movements. Another example is with arthritis of the knee. If they aren't able to hit a 90 degree or below parallel squat, that's totally okay. I am going to strengthen them through the available range that they have and continue potentially as some of my secondary or alternative goals to have them continuing to work on increasing their uh, range of motion through their knee. So are we doing no harm? That's number one. Will the lack of loading be an issue? And that's my number two. And then number three is if they are going through their ranges of motion, is it changing? Or number four, is pain starting to increase through their set? And so if we are starting to see an increase in pain throughout the exercise that we are prescribing, then obviously there is something going on and I'm going to back off. So those are kind of the four guiding principles that I use when I'm working with my older clients so that I'm continuing to push them and differentiating you know, between a muscular fatigue because sometimes my older clients can't differentiate between the two and an actual pain from an injury. And so those are the four guiding principles that I will use in terms of my exercise-based prescription. All right, that is my topic for today. 
Give me a comment below. Like, what do you guys think? Do you, are you looking for optimal or are you looking for perfect? What do you do with some of your older clients? Do you teach them to do the hip hinge and teach them squats? Even if uh, it may potentially cause a little bit of, um, a little bit of pain or discomfort. What do you guys do? Um, so I got a question. Can strength exercise make uh, breakdown and decrease performance in older clients? Um, for me, strength training is one of my cornerstones that I use for building the strength to prevent that breakdown exactly and prevent that decrease in performance in my older clients. And so um, even if sometimes I don't have perfect alignment, I'm still going to try and load them so that um, they're experiencing at least some strength increases so that that can translate into their day to day. So drop a comment below. I hope you guys are having a wonderful Wednesday. Again, I'm sorry for being a little bit late on posting this podcast, but I hope that we start a good discussion because, you know, there's camps on this and some people say, no, it's got to be perfect alignment before we start to load. For others, they say, we're going to try and do the best that we can. We're going to cue as well as we can for that individual. And so I want to know what side of the fence you're on. All right. Have a wonderful Wednesday. Bye guys. And we will see you in a couple of weeks. Hit me. Thank you for listening. And if you enjoyed this episode, go to ptonice.com, click on the courses tab, and check out Modern Management of the Older Adult. This is a course that myself and Christina Previtt are going to be teaching. It's eight weeks, an online format, interactive, and solely focused on helping students change how they practice and how they work with older adults. For more information, just go to ptonice.com. Thanks.